This video tutorial illustrates how you can turn a pogo plug device into a music player streaming audio from your home network through a stereo system. You need an earlier model pogo plug, like this version 2 in the pink box. It sells online for around $20. It comes with software to share media like external hard drives on your home network and on pogo plugs cloud service. But instead, we're going to root the device and have it boot a custom Linux USB image. Credit for this idea and the software and the steps I'm going to show you belongs to Andrew, who runs the Vortex Box site at this URL. All I'm showing you here is my own configuration with slightly different hardware. The Pogo plug comes with most everything you need in a bare bones computer, minus the keyboard and monitor. In addition to 256 megabytes of RAM, on the front side there's one USB port. On the back, there's three more USB ports a gigabit wired Ethernet port, and a power connector. The software we're going to install on the Pogo plug will play audio streams, but you'll need a separate device to serve them. Our setup is designed to work with a Logitech media server, which despite the Logitech name is free software, and you can install it from this URL. There are releases for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS X. My setup uses the LMS included in the Vortex Box Linux distribution running in a KVM virtual machine. We'll need two pieces of USB hardware to complete our setup. One is a four gigabyte or larger thumb drive that we're going to format with the operating system. The other is a USB audio adapter. You can find this inexpensive C media device for around $10 with a mini stereo jack for connecting to the headphones or an amplifier. Before connecting these, however, you need to install a new bootloader on the Pogo plug. Follow the instructions on building the VAMP at the Vortex Box site. Then format your USB key and download and copy the VAMP image file to it. We're now ready to boot our new operating system. Insert the USB key in either the front or the back port and your audio adapter. Plug in the LAN and the power cables and watch the system start up. In a little while, the light on the front of the Pogo plug will flash orange. When it changes to green, it's ready. Here's the final piece of my setup, a mini amplifier to drive my speakers. This model is a Lapai 2020A Plus and sells for under $25. It takes up a lot less space than a full stereo receiver, and it uses less electricity. It's got the standard dials for volume, bass, and treble. It has inputs for either RCA or mini stereo cables. I'm using the latter to connect it to the pogo plug. Of course, you don't need the amp and speakers if you only want to listen to your pogo plug privately. Just plug in a headset to the USB adapter. Now log in to your new audio player with SSH as the root user from your desktop computer. If you're not sure what the IP or host name is, check your router and compare its list of MAC addresses to the one printed on the bottom of the pogo plug. Run the also mixer command to set the sound levels using the cursor keys. After you exit, run the also control command to save the settings so that they'll be restored upon each reboot. You should now be able to control your pogo plug remotely from the Logitech media server running in your browser. Select the device vamp and you're ready to start playing music from your private collection or one of the internet plugins. A couple of final tips. If you need to restart your squeeze player, here's one way to do it. After logging in with SSH, find the process ID number for it. Then kill it and restart it. The dash n parameter sets the name that the player will use to advertise itself to your music server. The Squeeze Player software is the heart of your VAMP appliance and it's an active development. You can upgrade to the latest release without reinstalling the operating system. Download the binary for your ARM processor from Google Code then copy the file to your user sbin directory. Here, I'm backing up the current version of the file.
then set the user permissions to allow the file to be run as an executable. I hope this tutorial has given you some ideas on using the Pogo Plug as more than just a file server. For more details about my Pogo Plug setup and other videos and articles about open source applications, please visit my blog at tech.surveypoint.com.